This week after eight years, Arrow came to a close. So today I'm gonna to stop and rank every season of Arrow from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of every season of Arrow. My list isn't the right list. It's just my list, and I would love to see yours. We're going to disagree. We started watching at different points in time. We've enjoyed different things about the show. So let's have a nice, fun discussion. If you disagree with me, that's awesome. Just let's talk about our differences. Just don't write me off as a hater or saying I just don't know what I'm talking about. Let's have a friendly discussion. One final thing before we get started, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page. It's basically a 15 minute video talking about my feelings on the whole show, my experience watching it, what made me love it, where I got frustrated, and where I think things kind of went wrong at certain points in time. You can unlock that over on my Patreon page by joining at any level. With that said, let's get started. In last place is season four. There's really not much about this season that I enjoy, and there's no episodes that I love and go back and re-watch. The main villain, Neil McDougal, is Damian Dark, is a, I love the actor. I don't think he necessarily does a bad job, but the character, I don't think, fits the show Arrow, which started off a lot more grounded and gritty, and so when you have a character that's so based in magic, just kind of feels off, and by the end of the season, it goes so over the top, it gets cartoonish at times. Felicity in seasons one and two was one of my absolute favorite characters, but by this season, she just becomes so self-righteous and preachy that she is insufferable. I mean, you have an episode where Oliver just discovers that he has a child, he's processing through it, and she just starts lecturing him about it without pausing for a second to play the day out from his perspective, and it just absolutely ruins the character because it uses her to force melodrama that just weighs the show down from beginning to end. Plot lines about Diggle and his brother fall pretty flat. The season tries a whole bunch of things, but none of them really worked for me. Coming in at number seven is season six. Now there's a bunch of things in this season that I actually really enjoyed or wanted to really enjoy. Michael Emerson is an actor I really enjoy, so seeing him on the show was a nice surprise. I thought Diaz, when he really kind of got into his groove in the latter section of the season, it worked really nicely, especially the episode dedicated to his backstory. I really enjoyed that. There's some nice dynamics with the change of where Oliver is at in life with the sun and all the politics type stuff going on. But in that midsection of the season where Team Arrow decides to break off because they don't think that Oliver trusts them. They've got Wild Dog testifying against Oliver. The show became unwatchable for me. The show's always had this very sensitive balance with the melodrama and at what point in time does it just kind of add to the emotion of it? At what point in time does it go too far and just becomes unwatchable. And this season in the middle, uh, it was incredibly frustrating for me where so much of that stuff just took over, so many lectures on trust. And as you kind of hear what they're saying, it's like, well, you're not trustworthy. You just turned on Oliver. You just testified against him. You just broke off and created your own team. Of course you're not trustworthy. Of course he can't trust you. You're proving that right now. And there's just a lot of that sort of middle school ideas of trust that just didn't work for me. And it, even Diggle starts pouting about Oliver not letting him be Green Arrow. And it just puts all these characters in their worst light. And it just soured me on this season. Number six is season three, another season with a bunch of elements that I really liked and a bunch of stuff that didn't really work for me. Highlights of the season, getting Ray Palmer, Brandon Routh coming in to do another superhero show. Love seeing him on screen. Raz Al Ghul is a character I think is great, and it's fun to kind of swap out Bruce Wayne, put Oliver in there, and do some of that League of Assassins, League of Shadows type storyline with him, of him taking over as the new Raz Al Ghul. All that stuff, in theory, I really enjoyed. But the execution on a lot of it left a good bit to be desired. You had a bunch of elements where, in the first two seasons, loved the dynamic between Oliver and Felicity, and then as soon as they actually got together, it just didn't work quite the same. The tension of will they, won't they, was a lot more interesting of once they were together in kind of that awkward middle phase in those middle seasons. And that kind of weighed it down a good bit for me. And then even as you kind of moved into the actual plot line with Ra's al Ghul and the faking of the death and everything Oliver was doing, 
the nature of the plot line meant that Oliver was just so detached from everyone else on the team that the thing that you enjoyed about the first two seasons, the character dynamics, the interactions, the charm of all of that got lost, and so the season's not as strong as it should be, and it's certainly not as good as the ideas that they came to the table with. Next up is season eight. Now, this is the one that I'm the most torn on and don't really know what to feel about it. I didn't really hate the episode. I actually enjoyed a lot of the episodes in the seasons. They're really nice what-if scenarios. Some of them packed a nice emotional punch. It's interesting to see Oliver with his daughter who's all grown up. So a bunch of that stuff in the season really worked. But the concept of this season, especially as a last season to this specific show, makes absolutely no sense to me. This is not what was set up in the first season of the show. There was kind of this more grounded, gritty take of Oliver trying to save his city. And we get to the final season and we've already resolved the main plot line at the end of season seven, where he's retired and kind of left everything to these other people. We go into this one and it's so far into this sci-fi realm with time travel and that's just not the show that they set up. That's not the show that they promised. It became kind of its own spinoff of itself that literally exists for the purpose of bridging the gap between the show and the crossover and to set up a spinoff. And to me, that is incredibly frustrating as someone that was watching from episode one, someone that wanted this show ever since Green Arrow showed up on Smallville. And then with this season, what they did with it just did not match the show that they'd set up that I had enjoyed for many, many years. So that as a conclusion, it did not feel right at all. Also didn't really like the fact that in the finale in the last couple episodes, they undid a bunch of the consequences of the show by rewriting the timeline through Crisis. I didn't like that Oliver died on the special effects sci-fi crossover rather than on a proper episode of his own show. That doesn't feel quite right to me. Just a lot of things, just the ideas that they chose to end Oliver Queen's story did not feel like the proper conclusion to what I signed up for. And it's not just my take on it. Stephen Amell, in a podcast with Michael Rosenbaum last month and then as well this month, stated, I felt like season seven was the logical conclusion to the show, but it would have been fiscally irresponsible, his words, not to do 10 more episodes with the money that they were offering. And when I hear that, it just lines up what I'd been feeling as soon as I saw the season seven finale, as soon as I knew what they were doing with season eight, and then he verbalized it, basically what I had been feeling. So didn't hate the episodes, didn't mind some of the things that happened, but the ideas of it just feel so out of place. Number four is season seven, another one that I'm like split down the middle on because I absolutely loved the super max plot line inside of it where Oliver goes to prison with a bunch of people he put there and has to like fight his way out and partner up with people that he'd arrested previously. Loved all of that stuff. Back like 12, 13 years ago, David Goyer uh, wrote a script called Supermax and it never got made obviously. And I'd been waiting to see a story about Green Arrow in a prison with the people that he put there. And so we finally got this eight episode arc telling that story, thoroughly enjoyed all those elements. And then when it moved into the second half, it kind of started to lose me a little bit again. Now, it didn't frustrate me with the melodrama like the seasons lower on this list did, but what they did with the Amico Queen story, they just gave her a really bad motivation for what she was doing. I mean, Robert Queen is a scummy guy, but the reason that they gave for her turning into a psycho killer is ridiculous. The fact that he turned down her business proposal is not a good, good enough motivation for her to start killing people or for me to understand where she's coming from. And so that's just a plot line that should have a lot of really great weight to it. Just crumbles under a terrible backstory that they gave her. And then the flash forwards that they told kind of in certain ways ruined the end of the season because they set up a scenario where the future sucks and <laughs> wild dogs is corrupt and people are dying and Oliver didn't save the city. And then they, in the season finale, they close out with him being like, I can trust you guys. I've saved this city by building this team. Adios gonna go be a family man for 18 months. But we know that that doesn't work. So whether he failed because the city failed or it doesn't turn out great or he 
it doesn't matter because we know the crisis is coming and they're going to rewrite the storyline. All of that was meaningless. It was all these flash forwards to something that didn't happen, which is such a strange thing to do, such a waste of screen time when they were trying to close out this main story arc. And then the final episode, it just felt like it absolutely rushed to closing out the actual storyline of the show, which was Oliver Queen's mission. He returns to the city to save it. This season ends with him leaving the city to retire, having built the team that's supposed to save the city. And so it just felt rushed. It felt out of the blue that they actually resolved that here. And then they set up a, it, like there were elements to that final 10 minutes that kind of hit some really nice notes. But when you know it's about to end and we're about to set up crossover season, it doesn't land nearly as good as it should. So I have so many mixed feelings on this season because it's, in, to my perspective, this is the end of the show that I watched, was him leaving to retire to be a family man. Um, and then I love the other stuff, but a lot of those, the execution, the execution so often with the show just gets off, even though they have great ideas. Real quick, before I give you my top three, be sure to tell me what you thought down below in the comment section we're going to disagree. Just do so respectfully, please. Also remember, I have a companion video to this over on my Patreon page where I talk about all of the show, kind of not season-wise, but just my experience watching through it. You can unlock that at any level over on Patreon at the link down below in the description. Or if you just want another arrow ranking, I've got a playlist right here of some of my other arrow rankings. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy something else up there. In third place is season five, a bit of a refocus after a low point with season four. This one brought things back to what it was about originally, but also changed up the formula a little bit. You've got Oliver as the mayor, which adds in a bunch of interesting dynamics. He's in a different phase of life that just creates some new opportunities inside the story, as well as we now also have Team Arrow and recruits this whole team that he's trying to train up to protect the city as well. So while it returns to kind of that street level, let's try and save the day, we don't have Magic Guy as our villain. So a bunch of that stuff worked nicely to give it a boost of creativity. The main villain here is Prometheus. I've never been as big of a fan of him as a bunch of other people. I know a lot of people love season five and love him as a villain. I thought the performance got a bit hammy. I thought it got a bit over the top at times and a bit too overcooked in the way that he's doing things. But I appreciate that he is a return to grounded, uh, an opposite of Oliver, that sort of thing, except Oliver's got a team now. So a bunch of that stuff made for a season that returned to a bunch of stuff I loved about the show, but did it in a different way. Our runner up is season two. For me, this is classic Arrow. I go back and forth between season one and season two. This is the lineup where I thought they were just in full swing, where you have Oliver, Felicity, Diggle, that nice trinity as our superhero team, and we're starting to meet a few more people, a few more people are starting to get involved in the process that expands the mythology, but it doesn't feel too cluttered. It doesn't feel like we're losing focus from our main characters, and it doesn't feel like everyone's turned into a superhero, where the later seasons where Laurel's a superhero and everyone turns into a superhero, Thea's a superhero, I wasn't crazy about that element of the later shows, but here was the right balance where there was reasons that certain people were getting certain abilities and a few more people were entering in on the mix. Of course, Deathstroke, classic Arrow villain with a scheme that's personal. He's out for revenge. He's certainly gone crazy. This is where the flashbacks, I think, had the most weight. They were the most interesting as we're kind of looking at that backstory, that friendship falling apart and what caused the madness that led to Deathstroke's mission here. His attacks are personal. He's killing family members. And then Summer Glau showing up. Always great to see her show up on shows. So I thoroughly enjoyed that both as the businesswoman side to it and then where she's putting on a costume and turned super villain. All classic Arrow at its best. The This is peak Arrow, uh, excuse me, Oliver Felicity, Olicity for me is their dynamics here. The double entendres, the little flirts in all the different lines. This to me is the show in its stride doing what it does best. But coming in in first place is season one. I'm a sucker for origin stories. So a superhero origin story as a season of television, that is something that I'm going to love 
And that's why I loved this show right out of the gate, and I loved this season. It starts off with Oliver as this lone vigilante just out to kill bad guys with little hints of his backstory of what kind of happened on the island. And throughout the season, he slowly builds the relationships that would be pivotal for the rest of the show. I mean, I just loved early Diggle and his efforts to try to get Oliver in line and the back and forth between the two of them. Uh, Felicity's added to the show. She was intended to only be in like one or two episodes, but she just had such great rapport with Stephen Amell and Oliver that she grew into this character that was second most prominent character on the entire show. And that's kind of the magic sometimes in the storytelling process when you just have the perfect casting, these two people just click and it works and you go with it. And then throughout the season, you also get Malcolm Merlin as another classic Arrow villain who believes he's the hero inside of his own story. He thinks he's doing the right thing even though he's doing something absolutely insane and he's always so fun to see on screen. We got Tommy on the show with the uh, Oliver's friend, that dynamic that we really only got in that first season, but it became so memorable, but they kept bringing him back throughout the entire show. The melodrama made a lot more sense in this season as he's returning and he's making all these choices. He's got friends, he's got family, becoming a vigilante. And so I think it meshed with the story they were telling better than it did later on where everything just turned into a trust sermon. So for me, when I look at this season, I loved what they did with the fighting. I loved the cast they came up with. I love that it's kind of like Batman Begins as a season. All of it, I'm the perfect audience member for those types of things. So it comes in at number one. If you want that additional video on my take on the entire show, Arrow, you can check that out at my Patreon page, the link in the description. If you want another ranking right at this moment, you can check out that video right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.